Okay, let's work through Packet Tracer Activity 2.1.4.6, Navigating the iOS. This is for Cisco One, and we're going to talk about or demonstrate how to work with the iOS. Now, on your screen, you should be seeing a couple of things. Here we have our Packet Tracer screen, and here we have our Packet Tracer uh, instructions. And I won't leave this up for all of these videos, but I will for this one just so we can walk along through it. Now. I'm going to start by connecting the PC to S1 using a console. Here's PC switch one. Uh, we actually can't access this via the CLI. It's blocked. Um, and that's just because in this particular activity, they want to show you how to use the console cable. So we're going to come down here to connections and we're going to choose our console cable. We'll click first on our PC and we'll plug the console cable into RS-232. And then on S1, we're going to put it into the console port. Now, we've got that done. Now we need to establish a terminal connection. So we're going to open up PC1. We're going to click on desktop and we're going to find our terminal. And terminal settings are 9600, 8, and 1. This is uh, pretty much default standards for most terminal software emulators and for Cisco devices. So we hit OK and that takes us to our device. Now this has pulled up the data from the console in our terminal window. Now just so you know, this actually lies to you. When you do this in real life, you normally won't get all of this background data. What you will get is going to be a little flashing block cursor. Um, and we just hit enter like I just did, and it takes us to the next line. And so if we get that flashing block cursor, we just hit enter a couple of times. And we should be able to see that we're connected, and it will show us our prompt. Now, the prompt is the device name, which in this case is S1. And then this little part of the prompt here, a little greater than sign, that says we're in user exec mode which is when you open up a device via the console or via VTY line through Telnet or SSH or something like that, you will normally come out to um, this user exec mode. Okay, um, let's start by taking a look. We're going to follow along with the instructions here. So we're going to explore the iOS help. So here at the S1 prompt, we're going to hit a question mark. And the question mark will show us all of the commands that are available to us. Now, if you do just the question mark, it shows you everything in whatever mode you're in. So if you're in privileged exec mode like we are, you'll or user exec, sorry, you'll see all the user exec commands. If you're in privileged exec mode, you'll see all the privileged exec commands. So question mark will always show you all of your available commands. If you know a little bit about it, let's say you wanted to do, uh, you knew the command started with T, you do T question mark. And notice when you hit question mark, you don't hit enter. It just immediately takes effect. Um, and it shows us we have three commands to start with T, Telnet, Terminal, and Traceroute. Now, when you do that, notice on your prompt, it puts you back to whatever was just before the T. So if I want to see all commands that started with TE, I do TE question mark, and it's going to show me Telnet and Terminal. Now, key thing here, you do the question mark without any letters in front of it, it shows you all available commands. You do letters, then the question mark with no space, it will show you the commands that start with whatever that letter pattern is. So, um, that is your context sensitive help. Now there's a couple of other things, I'm going to veer off yeah, let me stick with this and we'll come back to it if we need to a little bit later on. So I want to go to privileged exec mode. I'm in user exec mode and remember that's the look but don't touch, you can't do much. But if I do a question mark, I'm going to see right here, enable will turn on privileged commands. So that'll move me to privileged exec mode and that's what I want. So I'm going to do EN and notice right here, I've got two things that start with E, enable and exit. So EN is enough to make this unique. And if I hit tab, the iOS will finish out the command for me. So I'm going to go to enable and hit enter. And there is my dollar sign. Now, tab will always finish out the command for you. You don't have to tab. You can do en and just hit enter. And it will take you to, uh, or it'll, because you've given it enough of the command en to be distinct, it'll go ahead and execute it and take you to privileged exec mode. Now, if we do a question mark, you're going to see we have a few more options. Okay. Uh, oh, and we know we're in privileged exec mode because we now have this little hashtag prompt rather than the greater than prompt. So we'll go ahead and move down here. Step two of part two, we're going to enter global config mode.
So that one is going to be config or configure. I'm just going to do config and hit enter. And it's going to ask me, do I want to do this from memory, terminal, or network? And you see right here, it says in square brackets, terminal. And what that means is if I just hit enter, it's going to assume that's what I meant. So now I'm configuring it from the terminal and you're going to see here configure and the hashtag sign. I get out of this typing exit or and, but I do this because I want to show you if I go to config T, T being that first option there, it'll go ahead and accept it and put me all the way in. If I forget what those options are, let me go back out, I can do config question mark and it will show me my options, which since I'm in packet tracer only gives me the terminal. So config T and we're back in. Uh, we exit out using exit like we've shown a couple of times. We can also type end and that will take us out as well. Okay, so part three, let's do the clock. So we're going to issue the command to see what we've got first. We're going to type show clock. So I did SHCLO, which is enough for it to recognize. And it gives me March 1st, 1993. Well, that's kind of crazy. So let's take a look at setting the clock. So I'm going to do clock. This is not correct, but we're going to do it anyway just so we can see it. And it says incomplete command. Incomplete command means give me more. I recognized clock, but I didn't know what you wanted me to do with it. So let's do clock question mark. And we're going to see that that gives us the option to set the time and date. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Clock set. And because I did the question mark, it immediately takes me back to the uh, clock. So I'm going to type set question mark. And it's... Now it's going to ask me for the current time. So this, as I keep doing the question mark, will prompt me through the entire thing. So we're going to do 15 colon 00 colon 00, which is going to set it for 3 o'clock. Let's do our question mark again. And now we see it's going to prompt us for date and year and all of that stuff. So, and I can do this step by step. We're going to set this for 31 January 2035. 2335 is really going out there. So, uh, clock set, uh, 1531 January 2035. It will never tell you when you did it right. It will only tell you if you do it wrong. In this case, it didn't tell us that we did it wrong. So, let's find out what we have. Let's do CL and hit enter. Ambiguous command. Ambiguous command means you didn't give me enough for me to know what I actually, what you're actually asking for. So I'm going to do CL question mark, and you're going to see that we have two things here, clock and clear. So if I do CLO, that's going to be enough to identify clock. And again, you can see it's asking what are we uh, looking for. So um, let's see if, if this actually took effect. We're going to do a show clock. And that's going to show us our time, 1541, well, 041, January 31st, 2035. Okay, so by now we should have an idea of how the iOS works, what some of the error messages are that we might run into, what some of the modes are that we can run into, and how to find some context-sensitive help.